Hello everybody, welcome to yet another episode of Cape Rugby TV. It is of course uh, Wednesday night and as you know we bring you the very best of uh, Western Rose Club Rugby. This week we'll be looking at the Varsity Cup, the Community Cup, we'll take a look at the Super 15. I know many of you are looking forward to see how you did in uh, the Super Brew competition. Well I must say that was quite an exciting adventure over the weekend. We're finally into it but we'll We'll catch up with that a little bit later. My guests on the panel this evening, of course, uh, Morgan Newman. Hello, Morgs. How's it, Japs? How are you going? Pretty good. Good, good, good. Good. I'll awesome see you, uh, weekend. So you lost your razor? Yeah, I've, I've started playing again, so I'm going for the rugged look, you know, trying to scare off the opponents. <laughs> right, then, um, of course, uh, glad to have him on the panel. A man who's well known in the communities of Western Province Rugby and an old stalwart of Western Province Club Rugby, Labib Levy. Hello, Labibs. Hi, JP. Thanks for having me here. Love the T-shirt. Yeah, I like it. Um, I think I'm a bit off colour. Um, you, you're giving me some um, extra air time here. <laughs> on the black versus the blue. But I love it myself. Well, we love it. We love it. We love, you look, I think you look absolutely fantastic representing the Cape Rugby TV team. And of course, you're one of those guys we've got where saying, Hello, I'm Labib Levy from Western Province Rugby and yeah. you're watching Cape Rugby TV. <laughs> the Cape Town 10s, yeah. Yes, of course, that was the Cape Town 10s. And of course, uh, Mr. Herman Abrams. Hello, stage. Good evening, JP. You have a good rugby weekend? Yeah, I think, you know, it was one of those weekends since last Wednesday to tonight that I probably watched more rugby in that time than I ever watched in a long, long time. There's far too much rugby. Well, to I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about that. I don't think you can ever say there's too much rugby. Maybe, <laughs> maybe for the players, but, but from our point of view, you can never have enough rugby. I quite frankly think there should just be a 24-hour rugby channel. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, but talking about a 24-hour rugby channel, you can get pretty much what you need here on the Cape Rugby Show because we cover it all. In actual fact, I think we are the only show in South Africa that covers it all. We cover the Varsity Cup, we cover the Community Cup, we cover Club Rugby, we cover the Super 15, and when the, the rest of the season kicks off, we talk about Curry Cup, we talk about the Vodacom Cup, we talk about Sevens. Uh, international. Like, international, be, yeah, 100%. Yeah, so we really do make sure we try and bring you all of the rugby uh, during the course of the season. But of course, it is time now for, as usual, to start off with the Varsity Cup. Don't forget the Varsity Shield forms part of the Varsity Cup. Let's take a look before we start off with some of the results from the Varsity Shield. As you can see there, uh, TUT was up against UWC on Monday night. 18 points to 8 win for TUT over UWC. Of course, UW's playing away and Fort Hare up against KZN. Fort Hare with an, uh, a home way loss there, 20 points to 18. Um, let's start with uh, you, Mr. H. Uh, we were talking about this home and away thing again. Here's a bit of a, uh, well, as, as not really expected, but I mean a tough one for UWC away against TUT. And again, the, the away game factor uh, plays a big role. Yeah, but I think we must overcome that. You know, it was like in the early stages of Super 50. South African teams couldn't <laughs> travel and they sort of, you know, we all accepted that when they go overseas, they're going to lose their games until they had a mindset change and, and, and they started winning their games overseas. Now, the UWC and the others, they must fall in line with that kind of thinking, you know, and say, but we need to win one or two of those away games. You can't just accept that you're going to lose the games. La Bib, let's go to you. Um, I mean, you've done quite a lot of traveling with teams. You know, the, you know what the environment is like. And we've discussed this with um, you know, the likes of, of UWC. The importance of creating the same kind of environment at home and then traveling with that environment so you take the field away. How do the players do it? It comes down to, I think, to, to the planning as well. Um, from a management perspective, you need to decide what, how, how your players respond to traveling. Um, some teams prefer to travel closer to the game, others um, earlier. Um, so the management need to see how the other how how teams deal with those issues. Um, one issue that sometimes happens when players travel is that if you spend too, too much time at the hotel, they get bored. Morgan can, can, can bear me out to that. <laughs> I don't know what um, that's supposed to mean for, so, for so Morgan. Like, what does he do? <laughs> what do they do in tour when they get bored? Like, 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 like the coaches and the management, they need to make sure obviously that the, 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 the captains run. There's um, actually um, players have activities to do, uh, make sure that, 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 that eating time is, is, is proper so that they can get the a peak at the right time yeah, of the day. Yeah. Obviously with different teams, they have different budgets even, you know, in terms of um, when they travel, etc. So, so the, the, all you need to do is get the proper balance and know what works for your team and create the environment so that your place in, is in a proper space. You, you, know? you talk about the environment like that. Um, Morgs, 
I mean, I've been involved with, with, with the Stormers for a long time in Western Province Rugby, and I think even when you were playing for Stormers Western Province, some of the things that like, uh, the guys were doing is that they, they, were, they would make, for example, they would, they would set the changing room up in the same way at home and that they would be away then, and the team manager would do little tricks to make sure they have the, that the players have that same feeling. Yeah, look, James, it's, it's very difficult to simulate exactly what happens at home purely because the guys are sleeping in their own beds at night and all yeah. these kinds of things. But, I mean, with, when I, with regard to the Western Province and the Stormers, they definitely do try and simulate as much as close to as possible what happens back home. So the changing room will be the same way. I mean, the players will, you know, the, same, the non-playing squad will go down to the team and will, will put every little player that he wants, if he's got his recovery drink for after the game and if he's got his half-time half shake that he wants to take at half-time, yeah. each player will have those powders in their bottles ready for them next to their boots so that when they arrive at the, cha at the, at the changing room, it's sort of, you know, as closely simulated as what they get at Newlands. Does that then help you, like, get your mental picture right, uh, Labib? Yeah, yeah, obviously, um, it's called one percentismen. So if, I, if, if I'm used to um, drinking the shake, like, like Morgan said, if I'm used to listening to a certain song, if I'm used to having a pre-match video, um, those are all the one percent which, which hopefully adds up and, and makes you um, operate at optimal level. Yeah, most. Yeah, James, the other, the other important thing is, is also is the, is the meals that the guys eat. Because, you know, when, you go, when you're staying in hotels, you're eating from buffet meals and you, you know, yeah, and you, you're yeah. not used to sort of having three different options for breakfast and all these different kinds <laughs> of things. So when I was involved in with Steph the Toy at the Storm, is, is what he's trying to do is he's really trying to go and say, right, what do, what do individual players like? Some guys like cereals, other guys like egg and bacon. You know, other guys like nothing for breakfast, you know, that's just how, how they do it. So you'll find that when you, the higher up you go, the, each player will have his, de his designated meal that he'll have for that breakfast and for that lunch. And I think that's just, you know, a big important factor as to your performance on the field. Because as we all know, nutrition is, is sort of 85% of the battle won. Well, folks, one team that also managed to uh, lose away from home was Forte, uh, losing to KZN, 18 points to 20. Once again, the travel factor does prove to be... A, um, a, a tough factor. Let's take a look now at some of the logs. We we'll take a look at some of the logs on the, the uh, shield there. CUT is still on 17 points. KZN on 12. They've played five uh, matches. They've won three. UWC is in third place. They're still in the running on 11 points. Forte on 11 and TUT is on seven points. TUT really seem to be struggling there with a big pl uh, points difference of uh, 65. It's time now for us to take an ad break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the Varsity Cup. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westenberg, like the new Super Ace One Ton Mini Truck. Our special introductory offer begins at only 109995 from only 1499 per month. With a 60,000 kilometer three year maintenance plan, the longest load body in its class, power steering, and so much more. The Super Ace Mini Truck is powered to take your business places. To find out more, SMS the words Super Ace to 32010, and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy for sure. Get more fantastic deals on Evox products at Discam now. Grab a 1.9 kilogram Lean Pro Diet Shake plus 30 free GCC Diet Caps for only $3.99. With 21 grams of protein and only 2 grams of carbohydrates, Lean Pro is perfect for your low carb diet. Build lean muscle mass with 2.6 kilograms of amino whey protein for only $4.49.95 and get a free creatine HCL. Get down to your nearest Discam now for more great deals on Evox products. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Hello folks, welcome back. Yes, of course, Cape Rugby TV here on uh, Wednesday nights on Cape Town TV. Make sure you tell your friends. And don't forget, you can find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. And for those of you that are on Twitter, at Cape Rugby TV. Time for us to quickly look at some of the highlights from the match between Tux and Marty's. We've got some... Uh, footage for you once again. Let's check it out.
Welcome back, folks. Yes, there you go. Varsity Cup. Of course, Tux against Marty. Some fantastic footage there. Looks like they put in some great hits there. Let's take a look now at the results from the Varsity Cup on Monday night. There you see Vitz are up against UJ. And it was a big win for Vitz. 63 points to 24. Marty's managed to scrape away in the dying seconds. 18 points to 16. Schimler's went down to NMMU. This after Schimler's fielding some strong teams in the last couple of weeks. 10-14 uh, loss there for Schimler's. And Pucker beating Ikees. 29 points to 26. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the match between uh, Pucker and Ikees. <laughs> Fantastic footage there. Right, uh, of course, uh, just for <laughs> folks, uh, it was UJ with a victory over Vitz, 63 points to 24. Uh, Labib, uh, big win there for, for UJ over Vitz. Would you have expected such a big numbers? Um, obviously, you, um, UJ, the team that's on form at the moment, yeah. I mean, they've, they've proved it in the, in the whole competition, going close against Martiv and obviously winning the, the other game. Um, so that, that result was expected, possibly not, not the score, but after watching the game, Wits, Wits never gave up for one minute. They actually played all the time. They had also more opportunities, I think. Um, obviously, from UJ's side, they've got some experienced players, um, a, an experienced coach in Juho van Us. Um, mm. The captain, Justin Wheeler, is a, is a most capped varsity um, cup player ever. He's played super rugby as well. Um, so they never had things their own way all the time. They had to work for their points. Um, yeah. they, they actually had to work to prevent Vitz from scoring points. Um, and Vitz was ch chasing that, that bonus point try. They only managed to score three tries. So the game was exciting from the first minute till the last. Um, the ref Rasta Rashivanga um, I think the game went into like 82, 82 minutes. Yeah. I mean, I think he, f he even forgot that the Uta went off because <laughs> yeah. it was such an exciting game. But I mean, a good result then for you, Joe, in a way win. Very, very good result. Because they're, they're second on a log at the moment, chasing Marty's. Yeah, both teams are in Joburg, so... It's, yeah, it's, I suppose it's, for them it's not such yeah, a big... It's, it's not like yeah, flying. It's not, there are no travelling involved. You're probably yeah. driving to the field. Good so point. Absolutely a, a, a good point, yeah. Um, Marty's, uh, it was very close for them. Uh, Mr. H, you watched the game. Yeah. Uh, Marty's, I mean, it went down to the dying seconds. So, you know, I don't know, Marty's just doesn't seem to be coming away with those big victories. It's either a question of Marty's not so strong this year, or the other teams are getting much better. Yeah, and for the second week in a row, they had to you know, play with 14 men at one stage. Mm. So they'll have to watch their discipline. Yellow the card. yellow card that they got mm. also led to a penalty try. Right. So, mm. you know, one needs to look, those, you know, look at those things. But again, you know, the Marty's... It's the first time since 2008 that they win there. Mm. So it's a, it's a, it was a fantastic victory for them. And you could see afterwards, you know, they were overjoyed. Yeah. But I think maybe they also, you know, didn't think that they will win that one there. And, and of, course, of course, for them, it was a, a, an, away, an away win. I yeah. mean, they did yeah. have to do a bit of traveling. Yeah. And uh, again, Renil Hugo, he played number eight instead of his normal lock position. Lock. He was absolutely fantastic. The opponents, they like to drive from, you know, line outs close to the sky. Yeah. He stole the ball on two occasions right on his own try line, which was fantastic. And they, you know, they couldn't do the things that they wanted to do. So, yeah, he, he, he's somebody that they must look at. Um, Morgs, I saw you uh, last night tweeting about um, Renil Hichu saying something about his, his composure on the field. Maybe you want to fill us in. <laughs> Yeah, look, it's not something I'd repeat on TV, but it's a little saying that the guys had last year that uh, everyone was just chill out and uh, they've got this. Mm -hmm. It was a saying that Selimash had and Renil was the one that came up with it. So I think he's clearly using it at the moment in the Varsity, in the varsity Cup. Labib, how important is it for a, a captain at that time of the game to, to, to calm the team down when it's in the dying minutes? Very important. Using Renil, you have an example. He's obviously played, this, it was actually Proven versus Bulls. 
Okay, so it's play those players, and, and I, I watched the one lineup which is still for, from the line, and I, and, I, and I heard the call, I won't even go into the detail of it, and I, and I knew Renil was going to take it, because it, 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 the last time we spoke last year, he said he's, he's, got, he's got the lineups figured out. Yeah. And he, and he proved once again that he's a um, quali quality player. Um, and just the one thing I want to mention is, you know, the Varsity Cup rules, um, the penalties yeah. is worth two points. You know, which promotes people rather to go for touch, which is what um, Tux did. And it's on two occasions, Tux was leading, I mean, the score was still 16 all. And they had opportunity to go that to the last 20 minutes and they opted for, 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 for touch. If they had taken those two penalties, the score could have been 28. So uh, the, 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 actually, the actual decision didn't go their way this time. Tux. Another player though that, that has got um, provincial experience in the fa in, in the family. I think his father played uh, Neil Lichu played for Western Province. Neil Lichu played um, Springboks as well in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, Mr. H. I mean, you you know yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. I think he played in your day. And he was a he was a gentleman. <laughs> you know. He's a real gentleman on the field. Yes. On the field. So, yeah, the genes is right. You know. So not quite in the Bucky's but a mold of things. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a, a good win there for Mighties. That does keep them on top of the on top of the log there. Um, Schimlers, of course, we said they lost against them in MMU. Ikees, of course, uh, didn't go well for them. Um, what is going on with Ikees, Labib? Um, it, it just doesn't seem to be happening for them. I know they've had quite a few injuries. Um, looking at the score, it, it's, it was a very close game. Obviously, obviously, it wasn't a televised game, but the score's telling me that they, they're not giving up. Okay, yeah. they, they, they're losing, but they're not giving up, which is, which is going to make quite an exciting game next week when they, when they, when they play Martis. Um, I spoke to some of, some of the players. They're saying the vibe is cool, the coaching is cool. Um, they feel them at certain point in the game, they're not making um, the, the, the proper decision. So um, I think when they're going to click, they're actually going to, they're going to surprise a few people along the way. Just a matter of it coming together? Matter of them, them clicking and, and um, coming together. <laughs> Morgs, your feeling? Yeah, look, it's, um, it's, um, it's going to be a tough one again for them against Telemosh this coming Monday. But in general, I think, you know, it's, it's that one win that, that will change your whole season, you know. Yeah. You, you go to one or two losses on the road and automatically those close games start, you know, start going against you. And then you win one or two games and all of a sudden the wins mm -hmm. start coming your way. So it's a quality um, IQ side that they've got there and Telemosh are not going to go down to the Green Mile and get it easy. So... I, I see Ike is really upsetting a few teams and, and look, they can still sneak in the back door, maybe make the top four and, and, um, and you know, make it to the playoffs. Still a couple of, still a couple of games left there. Uh, let's quickly take a look at the logs now in the Varsity Cup. And there you see Marty's are on, uh, well, they're still in first place. They've managed to pull away as much as we, we think that it's been tough for Marty's. The, 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 the logs are, uh, are showing the, uh, the details. Marty's has played four and they've won four. And they've got 18 points for their efforts. UJ's in second place on 15 points, Pucker on 14, Tux on 11, NMU, the Madibs on 11, Shimlers on 7, Ikees are down there in 7th place in 5th points, or at least on 5 points, and Vitz are uh, in last position on 1. So a little bit of work to do then, folks, for the teams in the Varsity Cup. I'm sure things are going to change for some of those teams. Let's look at the fixtures now coming up starting on Monday. It's KZN up against TUT. It's a 7 o'clock kickoff on Monday the 4th of March. And uh, UWC home game against uh, CUT. Right, so very important there, folks. UWC, the curse coming Monday the 4th. UWC against CUT. It's going to be a cracker of a match. You want to make sure that you get down there. You know what the entertainment factor is like at UWC. I think it costs almost nothing to get in the gate. You're going to get exceptional value in the stands. UWC really does turn on the entertainment. It is the one night of rugby that you should be out there watching Varsity Shield Rugby That Rocks on a Monday night, this coming Monday at UWC. And if you're not one of those games, you can always get down to one of the Marty's games or one of the Ike's games or when they're playing at home. But this coming Monday, we want to see you at UWC when they take on CUT. It's going to be a cracker of a match, and it's certainly one of those teams, local teams, that you want to make sure that you support as much as possible. Let's take a look at the fixtures now in the Varsity Cup section. It's Ikees up against Marty's home game for them at quarter to five. Ticks take on Vitz in Pretoria at seven. The Madibs against UJ at seven in Port Elizabeth. And it's Schimler's up against Pucker in Bloemfontein at seven. 
So those are your Varsity Cup fixtures, your Shield fixtures. We will see you for the Varsity Shield on Monday at UWC. Going to be cracker, going to be exciting, and we'll try on the following Tuesday, or at least uh, we'll try to check that the guys are all back and ready on the Tuesday so that we can get someone like Charlton von Jarsfeldt or Freddie Miller back on the show next week, Wednesday, to find out how their match went or this coming Monday. Time for us to take an ad break. That is a wrap of our Varsity Shield and uh, Varsity Cup fixtures, results, and logs. A lot more exciting entertainment coming up in the Varsity Shield and the Cup in the weeks to follow. Ad break. We're back with you guys in a mo. Get so much more for so much less at Tata Westenberg. Like the new Super Ace one-ton mini truck. Our special introductory offer begins at only 109995 from only 1499 per month. With a 60,000 km 3-year maintenance plan, the longest load body in its class, power steering and so much more. The Super Ace Mini Truck is powered to take your business places. To find out more, SMS the words Super Ace to 32010 and one of our service consultants will be in touch. Terms and conditions apply. Tata is a good buy. Sure. Get more fantastic deals on Evox products at Discam now. Grab a 1.9 kilogram Lean Pro Diet Shake plus 33 GCC Diet Caps for only 3.99. With 21 grams of protein and only 2 grams of carbohydrates, Lean Pro is perfect for your low carb diet. Build lean muscle mass with 2.6 kilograms of amino whey protein for only 4.49.95 and get a free creatine HCL. Get down to your nearest Discam now for more great deals on Evox products. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the D. DHL Stormers. Welcome back, folks. Cape Rugby TV, Wednesdays at 9. Time for us now to look at the Community Cup and the two teams that we are backing in Western Province, of course, Durbel and SK Warmers. It was some cracker matches over the weekend, and uh, we're happy to say that one of the uh, biggest supporters of SK Warmers is in the studio with us this evening, Labib Levy. <laughs> Labib, SK Warmers. Uh, second match now, first, off to a good start? First match. Sorry, first match, of course, first that's match, right, they had a match. buy in the first week, yeah. Uh, a good win for them, 49-26 um, over Villagers Worcester. Yeah, it was, it was a good win, obviously, um, the, the, the coaching staff and everyone will, will take the, they will actually take the result. Um, it was a shaky start first half, you must know. Um, Worcester Villagers, they went game two, they came for a nice victory themselves, so they were a bit more relaxed. The Esker guys were, were a bit nervous. New Greenpoint track, Cups, the clubs, uh, um, the band were going. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Let me just stop you there. I've got to ask you, before you tell me about the rest, are the clubs an intimidating factor? I, I don't know. You'll have to ask the opposition, but we believe that. You know, they're not used to the, the yeah, but music. but you keep doing it, so you must know. <laughs> We're hoping it is that, they, that the, um, like we mentioned earlier, take players out of their comfort zone. Yeah, You know, yeah. they see a paint, guy with a painted face, um, the band, a guy with a snare drum, trumpet going. You know, we think it's but worth about it, 10 I, points. I, I've <laughs> just got to ask you a little bit about the cultural history. If we just go back, sorry folks, I'm actually steering a little bit away from yeah. the rugby topic. But if we go back to the history of the minstrels, the clubs, uh, the coons, as it was so, so yeah. to be called, and now it's not really politically correct anymore. And I think yeah. people still call a lot of people the, the coons. coons. You know, minstrels. Yeah, yeah but, um, but I mean, if you go back to the painted face thing, it was almost like a, I mean, I wouldn't say war paint, but a way to disguise yourself. Yeah, it, it started obviously in the late 1800s, um, in the, you know, when, when, when slavery, etc. And then people were actually given um, the, the day off. So they wouldn't work for the madam or the, or the, or the, or the bosses on the day. Then um, the, the, the slaves um, were actually given the day off. And then what they would do, they would paint their faces and they would just have jovial and, and have music, have um, yeah. go, go, go marching, etc. So to the way they, the way they express themselves, the, the song, they would actually make fun. They would make fun of their bosses without them knowing. <laughs> so, you know, to that old <laughs> excitement. And you know what, what I find absolutely f uh, incredible is that you look at the cultural history around the world. Um, people often don't know how the, the Japanese... Uh, fighting class started, yeah. you know, is that um, back in the years gone by, the samurai class, the peasants were never allowed to carry weapons. 
and they started their own uh, weapons from the farm tools that they used okay. and their geese their, their martial arts suits yeah. were were um uh, uh, were their, their working clothes yeah now today that is your traditional karate suit or your traditional judo suit yeah. and if you look in, in in brazil that dancing fighting style of capoeira was when the the peasants so to speak they were not allowed to do any form of martial arts yeah. so they started a dance which the, uh, the the sort of the the aristocracy couldn't stop because yeah. um, it was a dance, and, and in that dance they weaved in again a martial arts. Yeah. And it's a funny how so many cultures around the world, yeah. when they were under oppression, formed yeah. their own little ways to, to overcome the oppression. And I think what you've given us a fantastic history lesson yeah. there because I think a lot of the youth today maybe forget yeah. where, the, where their 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 roots. Their roots, yeah. Obviously, using the word, word culture, um, community cup, um, which makes it quite different to, to varsity cup because varsity cup is just students. Community cup, it's um, a, a different um, cultures playing each other. You yeah. know, um, you have teams from Pretoria Police to Shazen to um, College Rovers yeah. to SK almost to Vusta Villages to um, Wellington Roses. Yeah. All different cultures. So that's what the teams are actually experiencing. You know, they, they're traveling, they, they, they used to, we used to the Cape culture, but now you travel, you, you get, get something else in club rugby, which makes a difference between Com Cup and, and, and Varsity Cup. Com Cup, it's already got a nickname, folks, the Com Cup. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, if you look at the clubs, uh, you, I wouldn't say it's gangsterism, but you, you, you have a, like a battle between the clubs. So, you know, Mr. H used to have the Belgravia Buckle Belt Swingers and Bailchi Cup Society, <laughs> you know. Uh, Mr. H, quite a, quite a lot of history there. I mean, people coming together and it can be intimidating if you change the environment. It's a little bit like you and your jumping castle. Yeah, no, it is so, you know. Uh, when you look at, uh, uh, say, a team coming to, to Greenpoint, and suddenly this band jumps out of nothing here. Loud noise, and you're not used to that, you know. It can be intimidating. Well, I can tell you one thing that imitate, intimidates intimidate the broadcasters, because for them it's like a vuvuzela. They can't <laughs> hear. The noise just kills the broadcasting walks. Yeah, I know, James. So listen, uh, I think before, before the intimidate effect, I don't think you can hear your calls in the field. <laughs> I've played there quite a few times, and I tell you what, the, the Greenpoint track, once that band is in full force, it's a case of you can't hear, you can't make calls, you can't hear the calls. Yeah. And every hit, the band has got a special, um, I think, a special tune that they play that for every big hit. So, yeah, it definitely is something to behold if you haven't experienced it before. But um, let's, let's, look, let's go back to the game now. 49-26 win um, for uh, SK Warmers over Villages. Um, Adnan Osmond, one again, once again, playing out of his socks. He's been at SK for a long time now. Yeah. He clearly has the leadership skills. He's, I've seen him over the last six years really grow in maturity. He's, he's got a stature about himself now. He's not the biggest guy in the team, but he's certainly one of the most respected guys in the team. Yeah, he's, he's, he's cool as a cucumber. I mean, he's, he's caught two tries. Um, um, one of the team the other one was quite a long-range try, and, he, and he's got a cool head when it comes to goal-kicking as well. He reminds me a lot of Dimitri Katrakilis because he, he will slot it over from anywhere. Sorry, we don't but, mention those names on the show. <laughs> we have to just say we don't mention any... Uh, Anything? Okay, sorry, just yeah. arguing there. No, no, mentioning goal kickers, <laughs> um, but the, the game was the game was quite tight in the first half. Yeah, I think um, was, um, was the villagers missed a few opportunities. Esk as well. Mm. Uh, um, after half time, Esk came out quite fire, firing, and and they, they put a few tries, but they they um, was the villagers got the odd interception, which kept them in the game, and it, it, the game was in balance up until the end, even though the score doesn't necessarily reflect it. Yeah, yeah. So, solid win there for um, SK Warmers, 49-26 uh, over uh, Villages Worcester. Mr. H, you were at the, at the Durbel game. It was a good win for them over African Bombers, 45-26. Uh, yeah, they, they, it was a great day of rugby. I like the atmosphere there. They even had jumping castles, I might mention. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the whole, <laughs> the, you know, but they struggled at the beginning. It took them 20 odd minutes to cross the line for the first time. Yeah. And uh, African bombers never gave up. They played their hearts out till the last minute. Yeah. And in fact, they scored four tries. Yes. So they went away with a bonus point. But for Durbanville, it was a very, very uh, costly victory. Mm. They lost their, their flanker, uh, Andrew Picotto. He went on. He was two minutes on the field. They carried him off. He's out for the season. Uh, I think he tore his ligaments. And uh, they locked uh, uh, Doe Vessels. He was injured in a tackle. His shoulders popped out. He's out for a few weeks. So it was a costly victory for them. And uh, they'll have to sort of re 
realign the team again. Mm. But they had good players, the the Namibian fly of Tian Sportser, he scored uh, a try, a very good try, and then he also kicked five conversions because he, he scored seven tries. And uh, Alconre Bota was in good form, and so was Gerard Teron, uh, the other flank. Yeah. They, they were all over them. You know. but, but African bombers really, you know, they, they, they were always in the game, always. So, a positive start then for the two teams. SK Warmers with the win, Durbel with the win, and um, yeah, that's where we want to see them. We've got a little clip for you folks, uh, the match uh, SK Warmers over the weekend. Um, let's take a look at that clip there. <laughs> the logs now folks let's take a look and see how our boys SK Woomers and Durmville have done on the logs there you see it's Johnson College Rovers from KZN they're on 10 points SK Woomers on five after just one game in second place Villagers from Brilliant in uh, well they're in third place on four points um, Shishin on one and Dispatch are in naught points it's uh, Valcom Rovers on eight Durbel are sitting on 11 points uh, uh, well this is of course in Pool B now folks uh, Pretoria Police are on four, African Bombers on seven, and uh, Boland Police are on three. Those are your logs. Now let's take a look at the fixtures coming up. And remember, you need to get down to those matches and support SK Warmers and Durbel every time they play a home game. In the fixtures then, we see uh, Dispatch up against Worcester, and we see Krikwas taking on SK Warmers at Kachu. So it's an away game for SK Warmers. This is this coming Saturday, folks. Uh, African Bombers take on Police. Rustenburg and Pilot take on the Crusaders. It's Rodeport against the Raiders in Rodeport. Bloemfontein against Durbanville. Away game for Durbanville. And uh, it's Evergreens against Brackpan and Roses United from Borland take on um, Selbornians in Wellington. Those are your community camp fixtures, logs and results. Make sure, as I said, that you support those two teams. Mr. H, you mentioned something earlier uh, to me um, while we were sitting downstairs in terms of club rugby. So I think this is our, our little feature now where we can talk about club rugby. Might as well squeeze it into our community cup rugby. Police, a team who used to play for Western Province, who traditionally used to be a very strong team. I believe they're back in the Western Province um, uh, structures. Yes, last night at the council meeting, the Western Province Union accepted them as a club. Obviously, they'll go under probation, you know, for a two-year period to see if they can make it. They'll start in the lowest league, the fourth division. And uh, but the thing is that the the, the police uh, topras they have agreed, you know, that they will go back and assist them. That they in the last few years they went out of existence because they had no support structural infrastructural support from the yeah. top now they will get that support 
and uh, hopefully they will they will become a strong team again. This of course changes the season's fixtures. We, yeah, we see that some, some people have published the fixtures as if they're, no. they're official. Folks, incidentally, if you have seen any fixtures um, that have been emailed to you, they are not official. They are purely for your own purposes to study. Anyone who has publicized any fixtures anywhere other than, than on the Western Province Club Rugby website, those are not official fixtures. Folks, you will have to wait for the fixtures until they are publicized by Western Province Rugby. Beware of liberty takers out there publicizing fixtures. Beware of clubs passing out fixtures as if they are official. They are currently still have to be ratified by the union. And as you heard now, you would have uh, heard that an extra club has come into the picture. So that would immediately change all of the fixtures. Um, Labib, let's go back to you. We mentioned um, police. Uh, you, had, you had some interesting things to say about how the players will be able to take an opportunity to play in different leagues now. Uh, I mean, at least from their... Uh, from their, their, their stations, they, they can all get back into rugby? Yeah, obviously, um, police, if, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, um, they had merged at some point with, a, with, with another club. I'm not sure. I think it was, was Vikings, so, they, so they've, they've, they've been reformed now again. But it's actually nice for the police force to, to reinstate um, a sporting environment in police stations because yeah. sometimes um, the, the, the police guys are not in the best shape, our police force. That's just my opinion. Um, so they can encourage rugby to, to be revived at the various police stations and in, I remember in the, in the 90s, um, even probably the 80s, but the 90s when we played against police, it was very tough to play against a police rug, a rugby club Yeah, yeah. because um, they, they had good training, there was guys from Pretoria that would come to training in Cape Town and they would, they would give you a very good game and, and win you regularly as well. Yep. So, Mr. Age, you also you were telling yeah. us about police and uh, Commissioner Lemoore, I yeah. think, made a comment. Yeah, Commissioner Lemoore is very keen, you know, that, that the police club be a force again and that they get the support. Yeah. But I think that he sees it more in a, in a, in a, in a, in a bigger picture. Mm. The police is in the community. Mm. And if you only see them as police, you might have a different vibe against them, you know. But if you see them as fellow sports persons, Mm. Then the whole thing changes. You know? mm. They become more acceptable to the community. But talking about the community, I mean, it's a, it's a massive, uh, a massive opportunity from a team building perspective. Because once again, it's players from a community, being their police community, being able to take to the field, and which encourages self-esteem. It encourages discipline. It takes away some stress. And I mean, if there's one community <laughs> that needs to relieve the stress, we know it's the police. Yeah. Um, uh, Labib, in your opinion, uh, a community level interaction from a team sport point of view, how important is that? I, th I think it's perfect, especially with the, with the gangsters out there, with the drug problems that are there. Um, it's, it's important that um, communities can, can communicate with the, with the, with the, with the police at, at that level. Yeah. Because it, it might even encourage more people in the community to become policemen, um, and, and that, that will actually just. Um, close that relationship as Mr. H said earlier. Well, I, I, you know, I've got to bring Morgan into this because, you know, I think a lot of people forget about, and Morgan doesn't like to sing his own praises, but, mm. you know, I've, I have to sort of make up Morgan's call it rap sheet, <laughs> for, <laughs> lack, <laughs> for lack of a better expression here. Um, Morgan, you, you played for the Springboks, you played for the Stormers, you played for Western Province Rugby, you captained the emerging Springboks um, in, uh, in, the, in the British and Irish Lions tour. Uh, I think you, you, you played in the Under-21 World Cup, the Under-19 World Cup. I mean, you've, you've, you've really been up there. What, is imp what, I'm, what I'm getting at here is, you know, if one looks at it from a community perspective, communities, as much as Labib was saying now about team building and so forth, they need role models. You, I would like to know your personal experience, you as Morgan Newman. People in the community, anywhere, in the street, in shopping malls, they must have a sense of, pride when they meet you and go this is a guy who did it who we can look up to how, what is the importance of, of being a role model model and how do you personally treat that look james i must say that obviously with the i can speak only for the guys that i've i've, I've had contact with and that have come and sort of played the touch rugby and the soccer in the street with us and i mean rangers rugby club which is around the corner from me has literally i think i've seen more guys and sort of my neighbors go there and go listen i also want to get involved in rugby i also yeah. want to play rugby purely because of that 10 or half an hour that you spend playing touch rugby, you know, sort of with yeah. the guys that, that are in, all live in my street. And the same goes for any sporting career. We'd play touch rugby in the street, you'd play soccer in the street. 
And my brother was a professional footballer, and the same thing happened there. I mean, he ended up having five or six guys that have just come from there and said, listen, where do you play? I also want to get involved. And, and I think that's, that, that has really been a big mm. thing for me, is that seeing these guys go to the nearest club and go, listen, I also want to get involved. And whether it's been from me that has done it, sort of, you know, in, through my community, or other guys like Ishmael Dolly, who's done it in, in yeah. sort of, you know, in Book Up. And it's, it's, there's so many different stories like that that don't get told. So for me, purely, it's, it's a massive... Um, you know, the, the community needs it when you see guys doing that. And, and I think we need to build more of them, um, sort of, you know, build as much of them as we can, as soon as we can, really. I mean, I, I, I truly believe that rugby is, as, as you know, that, I mean, that's the thing that we love. We love rugby, you know. Um, I truly believe that it is a fantastic vehicle in the world of sport to be uh, an opportunity. I mean, look at Mr. H. Mr. H used to be a member of a, a rather notorious society called the Belgravia Buckle Belt Swingers <laughs> and Bailchi Cup Society. <laughs> now, Mr. H could easily have gone down off the path of righteousness. <laughs> and nevertheless, he ended up being the deputy CEO of Western Province Rugby. Mr. H, how did you, as a former member of the Belgravia Buckle Belt Swingers and Bailchi Cup Society, <laughs> <laughs> how did you manage to not steer off the path of righteousness and end up being a role model as yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's rugby that kept me there. Yeah. Playing, you know, being disciplined, going to practices and listening to the elders. Yes. And, you know, and so nah, that's right. Well, I mean, you'd be now, an, of course, an experienced member of people telling you to, to, to listen to their elders. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look now, folks, at the results from the uh, Vodacom Super 15. It was Super 15 fever time. And yeah, it was uh, that what we will all be waiting for. And I think, of course, there was one big shock result over the weekend. And uh, we'll take a look at that. Let's look at the results now. Highlanders, well, they went down to the Chiefs, 41 points to 27. And, of course, uh, it was the Rebels losing to the Brumbies, 30-13. The Stormers, it was a loss for them, 25-17 against the Bulls. The Hurricanes losing to the Blues, 34 points to 20. The Reds, 25-17 over the Waratahs. Cheetahs going down the Sharks, 29 points to 22. And was the Kings with a very surprising win. And I think a lot of people lost their money after expecting the Kings to lose every single game in the Super 15, 22 points to 10. Let's start uh, with you, Morgs. The Highlanders. It was a good win for them, uh, or at least a loss for them against the Chiefs. Did we expect anything else? It was a 41-27 win for them. Look, James, I think the Islanders have made some good acquisitions. I think Nanu is going to be a big difference for them in midfield. But the Chiefs are defending champions. And, I mean, look, besides the result, the rugby that was played through that, I mean, I've been seeing people tweeting and Facebooking about the, there was a three-minute stint during that game, which I think is the best three minutes of Super 15 rugby we've seen in the last, I mean... Let's call it five years. I mean, literally, the guys were just, you know, throwing the ball from end to end. It went from side to side. And, and I think that's how the Super 15 rugby should be played. I think the guys should really go out there and throw the ball around. This, um, you know, the, the, the old sort of structured, you know, very con uh, conservative um, approach. The New Zealand has taken that and thrown out the window and really shown how running rugby should be played. And, I mean, besides the result, I mean, just the rugby yeah. itself is really an, um, sort of an, an example of Super 15 rugby. Labib, the Brumbies beating the Rebels, 30 points to 13. I expected a better performance from the Rebels, but it looked like Jake White has got his uh, Brumbies uh, to some level of stability. Yeah, obviously, um, they, they would have been slightly disappointed after last year's close, close call in, yeah. order to, in, in order to make it to the, to the playoffs. So they've done some of their planning, and, and, and you can actually see it on the field. Um, they, they're, playing, they're playing very similar to actually to where South Africa played when they won the, yeah. the World Cup, you know, um, playing in the right areas and mm, attacking mm. In, the, in, the, in the right areas. So it will be interesting to see how that conference pans out. Mr. H, good win for the Blues over the Hurricanes? Yeah, also, you know, I, I expected the Hurricanes to do better because... Uh, they, no, they're a good team. They, they, they can upset anybody. But give it to the Blues. They look like they're back. I mean, at the beginning, they, in the beginning stages of the Super Rugby, they were the team. Yeah, yeah. And then they sort of faded away, and now it looks like they're back again. Of course, the other results here, it was a loss for the Waratahs, as we said. Uh, the Sharks, though, uh, win for them over the Cheetahs. Uh, more solid win for the Sharks. Uh, it's pretty much what everybody expected. Maybe they didn't play to their socks, but it is early in the season. Yeah, look, it's, it's early in the season. The Sharks would just have gone down to Bloom and said any little bit of result they'll take. Yeah. So, yeah, to walk away with five points is definitely, I think, um, a job accomplished. The shock match over the weekend was, of course, the Kings' victory over the Force. 
To be honest with you, if you watch that match, I'm not going to elaborate too much on the Kings. What I was with, I was absolutely disgusted by the fans at the Kings who decided, as much as people have been asking them to not do it, they decided to boo the, uh, the, the force on the field. I think the force had a shocking game. Quite frankly, I think that the Lions would have beaten the force probably with a half a team on the day. But uh, uh, nevertheless, congratulations to the Kings, a win for you. But honestly, when you take the field again, considering your background and how you managed to get into this team, at least into the Super 15, I don't think it's appropriate that you boo any team on the field. But nevertheless, Mr. H, a good win for the Kings, 22 points at 10 over the force. Yeah, and no. against all expectations, they're heading the South African conference. Can you believe that? I mean, of all teams. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't take that bet that they would lose every single team in the thing. There we go, though. That was the, those were the other teams, so to speak. It was the Stormers, though, that went down, unfortunately, in the opening game to a very tough Bulls match. But it does look like that match took some serious injury toll for the Bulls as uh, they managed to beat the Stormers 25 points to 17. Morgs, your feeling on the Stormers match? Yeah, James, again, early days in the competition. It's never easy to go down to Loftus and, and get a result. So, but yeah, I mean, the Stormers who pride themselves on their defense to put, past, to put 27 points past the Stormers away from home. I don't think, I think they've got a bit of work to do before, they, before another tough one where they go to Durban and they play the Shock. So, yeah, yeah. But a tough week ahead for them. Labib, your opinion of Alton Junch? A lot of people are pointing fingers at Alton. He's had a tough couple of weeks behind him, <coughs> um, taking him to the field. You think he's going to settle in? Yeah, I think, I think he deserves another opportunity. Um, his goal kicking wasn't up to standard on the day, but um, I still think the quality fly of his, his, his has ability to get his back kind of way. He can distribute, he's got the skills, he's, he's shown um, over time that, that, that he is a quality player. So maybe another opportunity for him, and, and, and then, then we should have taken it from there. He's, he's got a big test, like Morg said, um, yeah. show this week. Well, we haven't seen the team yet. Um, we're expecting Joe Peterson to come in the starting lineup. Yakutato has injured his testicles. Um, so uh, great to have a player. Great to have a player like um, Yakutato in the squad. Yeah, Yak Yakutato. I mean, he's a, he's a big boy. He's proved his worth at the Lions. He's, he's coming to the Stormers team. He's done well in the warm-up games. He's excellent on the on the training park. Um, he was he was quite solid last week. Um, pity about his injury to his um, testicles, and hopefully it heals <laughs> early, quick. And but but great to have a backup like Joe Peterson in the mix. Excellent, excellent. You know, I mean, you can't go wrong. You bring excellent. him on, he just puts it over. Goal, goal kicking. I mean, he, he, he won the Curry Cup last year for the Stormers with that tackle, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's good to have that type of depth. And depth is what's going to make you do well in this comp. Right, folks, now time for us to look at the Evox competition. If you want to win for yourself a Evox hamper, of course, Evox is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. We'll start at the beginning again. It's for the before, the during, and the after. If you want to win for yourself the before product, that's the Cyto Crank. Get that? That's what the Stormers use just before a match and before practice. The during is the Super Carbo. That's what you see them drinking on the field. All right, a Super Carbo, and I particularly personally love the orange Nachi flavor, the best of all. And then post-match recovery, rapid recovery. That is the product that you want to make sure that you're taking after a match, after training session to help you get to the next training session. Of course, uh, Labib SK Warmers used this last year? Yes, we used it and it worked very well. Um, the guys um, responded to it well. We had less, we had guys fresher for the, for the next game, so that works very well. There you go, folks. Rapid recovery, that's what you need. Get you the next game, get you the next training session straight after every game. You want to win this hamper? Just SMS us now to double three two eight zero. Tell us who is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. And there you can see Kyle Martin. Congratulations. You are last week's winner, Kyle. Your Evox hamper is available for collection. We'll be in touch with you shortly. Let's take a look now at the logs in Super 15. It's the Brumbies up on the top, the Blues, the Southern Kings, the Chiefs, the Bulls, the Sharks, the Rebels, the Reds, the Crusaders, the Waratahs, the Cheetahs, the Force, the Stormers are in 13th place, followed at the bottom by the Highlanders, the Hurricanes. But congratulations to the King who are in third place. Of course, um, it is now time for us to look at the uh, fixtures. The Blues take on the Crusaders in Auckland. It's the Waratahs up against the Rebels. The Reds take on the Hurricanes. The Chiefs take on the Cheetahs. The Bulls take on the Force. And it is another away game for the Stormers up against the Sharks. Morgs, your feeling on the, the Sharks? Stormers match, uh, the Sharks are going to be getting better. The Stormers are also going to be better, but it's going to be a tough game. Yeah, look, James, to go down to Durban is never easy. Um, you know, it's always a tough one down there. The Sharks, after having one game under the belt and the Butterflies are now gone. Yeah. It's going to be a tough one for the Stormers, but they'll be looking to improve. And I think they've had some harsh words in um, this past week. 
And yeah, I'm looking forward to an exciting game. I think it's two of our, our, our better running sides in the, in the competition. Time now for us to look at the Super Brew rankings. Of course, now time for us to check players and posers. Who did the best this week? Who went down? All right, so there you can see on your slide now, Ivor, congratulations. You are the best performing player uh, this week. You are the player. The poser was Lekker Dung. Unfortunately for you, yeah, it's the Swakster Dung player. Uh, <laughs> the poser, yeah, you pose Lekker Dung. Bekgerek. Anyway, uh, you win for yourself a Science Stormers jersey at the end of the season. The best, uh, or at least the overall uh, pool topping winner, uh, wins for themselves a Science Stormers uh, jersey. And uh, in second place, it's a 2,000 rands worth of Evox products. Third place gives you a 1,000 rands worth of Evox products. Right, um, just incidentally, folks, this is the yellow cap. I'm going to have to throw it sort of into the middle there somewhere. Um, Labib, uh, can you maybe just put that in front of you there for just one second? Maybe just hold it up in front of you. There, you, folks, you can see there's the shot. Okay, so th that is, of course, um, uh, there you, you see the shot. <laughs> you can put it at your chest. It's difficult to get these camera angles right, but there you go. Why do we should put it there? Because Jerome is this week's most improved player. Yeah. <laughs> so congratulations to, to Jerome. Unfortunately, we don't have the celebrity panel um, up there, but uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that uh, later in the week. We don't like to brag about who's at the top of that panel, so we'll just skip right through that. Super Brew prediction times now from the panel. Labib, I'm going to hope you're going to throw some numbers in here for us as well. On Friday, it's the Blues and the Crusaders. Morgs? Um, I'm going to go Crusaders by five. Mm, Labib? Blues by seven. Mr. H? Crusaders, ten. Crusaders by 10, that's a very good big call because I don't know, the Crusaders sometimes slow, start slow. I'm going to go with the Crusaders by 5. It's the Waratahs up against the Rebels, Morgs. Waratahs by 7, JP. Labib. Waratahs by 12. Mr. H. Waratahs 9. I'm going to go with the Rebels by 5. Mm. I don't know why I'm sticking with them, but I'm probably going to be told that's going against the grain. Reds and the Hurricanes, uh, Morgs. Oof, that's a tough one. I'm going to go Reds by 5. Eight. Reds by eight. Uh, Labib. Hurricanes ten. Hurricanes ten. Red seven. Red seven. I'm going to go with the Hurricanes by four. It's the Chiefs and the Cheetahs playing in Hamilton. Um, Morgs. Yes, Cheetahs have just travelled. I'm going to go Chiefs by twenty-two. Chiefs by twenty-two. Yeah. I've got Chiefs by twenty. Chiefs fourteen. She's 14. I'm going to go with the Cheetahs by... Uh, I mean, uh, yes, sorry. I'm going, to go, <laughs> I'm going to go with the Chiefs, but I'm going to go low. Because I do think that the Cheetahs travel well away. They've proven us wrong many times in the past. I'm going to go with the Cheetahs by four. Um, the Bulls against the Force. They're playing in Pretoria. We know that the Bulls have lost some players. Morgs. Um, JP, Bulls by 17. Bulls by 17 over the Force. Bulls by 25. Bulls by 25. Bulls 20. Bulls by 20. I'm going to go with the Bulls Force. by 17 over the Force. Because um, uh, I'm sure, as I said before, that probably the Lions players could have beaten the Force. But of course, the Lions are not allowed to play in the, in the, um, in the Super 15 this year. Sharks and the Stormers. Of course, there's only one team that you support in this prediction, win or lose. Because you support <laughs> the Stormers come heaven or high water. It's the Sharks against the Stormers in Durban, Morgs. What are we going against the Stormers? We're saying draw. There's only one way to go. <laughs> okay. You can, I'll go you can choose whatever you want. I'll go Stormers by three. Did I hear yeah. a little bit of a <laughs> shh in there? But yes, Labib. I said Stormers by nine. Stormers by nine? Stormers three. Stormers by three. I'm going to go for the Stormers by nine. That's, of course, your Super Brew predictions, and it is the, in the end of our show. Remember, you can find us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Find us on Twitter, at Cape Rugby TV. We want to hear from you on Twitter. We want to hear from you on Facebook. And as of next week, we'll be looking at some of your Facebook comments. We've been asking you for your suggestions on matches and how you feel about those post-matches. And uh, we've been seeing some great comments come in, some flooding in on the Cape Rugby TV Facebook page. It does seem to be the new chat zone. Morgs, nice to see you on the show. Good to be here. Thanks, Jeff. See you next week. Uh, Labib, um, nice to have you here. Thank you very much. There's, of course, the cap. No, it was great being here. Enjoyed it. Yeah, and of course, we want to see you on the show more often because we know that you're so integrally involved with Western Province. You know what's happening in the clubs. Yeah. You know what's happening at SK Warmers. And, 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 and when it comes to the dyes and the proteas, and not to mention the fact that, of course, you helped out a little bit last year at the Varsity Cup as well. We were both there together. 
I was UWC where yes. a couple of sessions with him, yes. A couple of sessions at, at UWC, so, so you're, you're completely in the mix, so we really would like to see you more often, and, and what a pleasure for, for the folks, who, the fans of Cap Rugby to see you, yeah, you know, and it runs in the family. Tell Munib we say hello. <laughs> I will, thanks. And Mr. H, we'll see you again next week. Yeah, sure, we'll be, here. we'll be here. Don't overdo the rugby? No, no, I, won't. I just want to say to the guys out there who don't know the new laws, on Thursday night, yeah. there's a law session at uh, Belleville, uh, high school, yeah, and they can also buy a DVD on the laws for ten rand at the union offices. So on Thursday at Belleville High School, yeah. they're going over the, over the laws. Western Province uh, is conducting, yeah. I take it, a, a referee a, a laws seminar, yeah, and they can get a DVD. Yep. Belleville High School. How do they find out more about attending? Benteron. Benteron at the union. You can phone the union at 021-659-4600 if you want to go and att attend that referee's course. That's a wrap from us, folks. Next week when Jerome gets back, we'll see if he's still got the yellow cap. That's a wrap. We'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place. Have a great rugby weekend. Bye-bye.